because of them, they've turned my life around. I could feel that they actually cared and wanted to listen, and that's what you need when you're in that low of a place. We care for everybody that we go and see, and you can't help but be affected by the situations that we come across. What we try to do is show them that there's a different way of life. There's something better out there and anyone can achieve it. And we will back them and try and support them to achieve it. Born 20 years ago, Cumbria Community Foundation has touched and transformed so many lives. There's huge need in the county. We've helped people who couldn't afford to heat their homes. We've seen people recover from drugs and alcohol addiction and build whole new lives. People who were affected by flooding, the tragedy of foot and mouth. And as our public sector shrinks, disabled people, people with medical conditions, young carers, domestic violence. It's not a nice list in some way, but it's real and they're all issues that we do tackle. There's no purpose in life unless, unless you're part of a community, unless you can help people who are less fortunate than yourself. Community is huge here. Uh, there's so many different types of communities, but they seem to all come together to be a Cumbrian. Organisations like CCF are so important for areas like ours because they are the people that have the understanding of the whole. They're able to connect those people who want to help with the need. I think CCF bridges the gap for people who are not doing so well. Charities like the Cumbria Community Foundation fill those gaps with the funds that they do, but they also talk about the issues, they raise the profile of them, it's not hidden and it's like this, is, this exists and we need to address it. In terms of dealing with uh, some of the poverty and social issues, uh, the role of the Community Foundation is very important. In 20 years, the Community Foundation has given out grants worth an incredible £42 million around 4,000 groups and 8,000 individuals receiving funding to make a long-term difference to people's lives. Take this inspiring project, the South Workington Youth Partnership. It's a youth, disability and community charity, and here children and young people, some with disabilities, get together almost daily. We're different, I think, because we're more like a big family. Anyone that comes and joins us is welcomed in with open arms. Meet Sarah, born with a condition that's left her with a lifelong disability. If things had been different when she was born, I think she'd either been a nursery nurse or she'd have been a teacher because her ability with children is amazing. But she'll never do that. But her coming to the youth club and helping and being amongst the children, it's fulfilling something that she'd never have been able to fulfill. And in 2017, Sarah did something her family never thought possible. With the project's support, she completed her Gold Duke of Edinburgh Award. Lots of tears on the day they got the award. It was just, it was incredible. Okay. It was, you know, I feel like my heart could burst her. It was, I'm so proud of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Love Barrow Families is another life-changing charity doing incredible work. A lot of the families who come here are desperate to be heard, to be understood, to be not judged, and to not have to, one of the really big things is to not have to live in fear of having children taken away. So Dean and his family were one of the first families that came and he was drinking really heavily. He was worried about losing the children. He, he thought that the children might go into care. Just, you know, it, I think the, the word was shame and that's what, you know, and that's why I was scared to ask for help. So he started to think about what does it mean to my little girl when I'm drinking and I'm slurring? What does she see? And he, he, he couldn't live with that. And that was, I think, one of the motivations for him Stopping, stopping drinking. I think they could see the good, the good in me that others probably couldn't. Because of them, they've turned my life around. Cumbria has levels of poverty comparable with some of the worst in the UK. One in eight households earns less than £10,000 a year. One in eight households live in fuel poverty. One in five people have a long-term health problem or disability. There is serious deprivation and the Community Foundation has grant officers um, and also the Grants Committee panel um, who, having seen enough of the um, requests, know exactly where the need is and can respond. So what inspires philanthropy? 
getting out and seeing the work on the ground, meeting the volunteers. I mean, literally tens of thousands of hours given uh, by folk in, in every kind of imaginable uh, service you, you can think of has been really, really uplifting and, and very rewarding. And, and real eye-opener because most of it is, goes unseen and unrewarded. It's a pleasure for me to be able to uh, give away some of what I've earned. Um, and the motivation for that, I don't know whether it's philanthropy or um, enlightened self-interest or make me feel good or um, whatever, but um, I'm very, I feel lucky and lucky to be able to share it in a small way. As a business, uh, we don't think of it so much as um, philanthropy, but rather as responsible business. So um, I think that um, business has great power to make change and make a contribution to wider society. And I think uh, it's very important that businesses take that opportunity. And I think um, the magic really is that actually if they do that, it makes them into stronger businesses as well. Your colleagues want to work for companies that give back. Um, there's a lot of choice out there for businesses to work for. I think most people want to work and be in places which suit who they are as well. So I would encourage everyone to do their bit. If we all help, we can all win together. This generosity means the Community Foundation can help so many charities like Calderwood House in Egremont. You don't immediately think of homelessness as a problem in West Cumbria, but it is. A lot of people think because we don't have some sort of cardboard city on King Street in Whitehaven that there's no homeless problem, but we've had over 125 people through our doors since we opened. We know that there's a, a distinct homeless problem in West Cumbria like there is everywhere else. Um, and uh, what we've done as a community is, is tackle it together and it's thanks to the likes of the Community Foundation who supported me right from the very beginning that, that we've got this wonderful facility today. Amy came to Calderwood looking for help. On drugs and with no home, Calderwood changed her life. I had a mental breakdown in 2015 from an emotionally and physically abusive relationship um, and I started taking drugs. Coming here, I had no faith in myself or belief in anybody else. I didn't trust anyone. So without Calderwood House, where would you say you would be now? If not here or in a worse situation. They say life begins at 40 when mine's began 10 years earlier. <laughs> HUK South Lakeland helps administer the Community Foundation's Winter Warmth Fund and this fund has saved lives. Rural isolation is a big problem in Cumbria and this combined with high levels of poverty across the county means charities like this one perform a critical role. We have over 20% of our clients in fuel poverty, and that's a huge number. And also an awful lot of people who are very close to that um, uh, fuel poverty line. But what we've got, which other organisations haven't at the moment, is the officers who can go out and do the home visit. For many people, we're a lifeline. Hannah Kitchen is a caseworker at Age UK South Lakeland and sees people in such desperate situations. It can be shocking. It's, it can be absolutely heartbreaking to see that some of the most vulnerable people in society are living in, in such um, a dire situation and maybe have been for a number of years. They've got so much worry, they don't know where to start with their story, but actually all they want is somebody to tell them that it will be okay. I'm there to be able to provide them with that reassurance, but equally, um, I am human and it does affect me. And I do come out of those situations, get into the car and, and you just cry. The Phoenix Youth Project in Cleeter Moor is another charity changing lives. And we work young people in, in the local area in Cleeter Moor, for instance, Moor Row, for young people eight, age 8 to 19. And it's very much, very simply, the things, just, just young people can come to a safe place, a friendly place, a warm place, come and just chill out and hang out and be with their friends. And then we go much beyond that. We do a lot of education stuff, a lot of informal education with the teenagers, drugs, alcohol, sexual health. But we also do, you know, work on CVs. You can walk into youth club and you just have a big smile on your face because you can just see young people, you know, just having fun, really. We're seeing rising rates of uh, mental health um, distress amongst our teenagers and younger children and, and adults. So there are gaps and most of the gaps um, can't be closed just by health services. Without funds, we wouldn't be here. 
you know. So the foundation and the funds they've got have made a massive part of our project. You know, it's hard to say would we be here or not without the foundation. Would we be here in the way we are without the foundation? Definitely not. 20 years of investing in people's lives only made possible by philanthropy. Looking 20 years ahead now, what would your aspirations for Cumbria be? Um, I think we, we need a lot more for that philanthropy and Cumbria Community Foundation I think over the last 20 years has shown how good at delivering the, the money that is donated and spreading it to the people that really, really need it. I would hope first and foremost for a growing and vibrant economy because without that then, um, then it's very difficult to really contribute. Um, so I think that is the most important thing to get right and then I think secondly um, having a community of organisations, public sector, businesses, uh, charity sector working together to really feel passionately about addressing some of those needs. If we can get that combination right then we'll be doing well. My hope for the future, certainly within the year that I'm High Sheriff, I'm hoping to see and encourage more inclusivity. I'd love to see a Cumbria where young people don't say, oh, well, that's where I'm going to end up because that's where my family ended up. I want them to say, oh, I lived in Cumbria and I had all these opportunities and this is why I've ended up here now, you know, running this company or being, you know, the CEO of wherever, just the aspiration to do better and not blaming it on being rural and being local, actually being pushed to the next step. My wish would be that the more people will come forward so the Community Foundation can plug more of the gaps. The gaps are going to get greater. I'd like to see that bridged in some way so that people have a fairer deal. I think the Cumbria Community Foundation in particular uh, helps maximise the money I give. Um, they can make sure the money goes towards groups and people who most need the money. I can most turn that money into the best advantage. So without philanthropists, we couldn't make any of our grants. And I think our challenge is just to recruit more philanthropists and to excite more people to give. Because I want as a hallmark of success in our county that people then choose to set up a fund with the foundation and get the same amount of satisfaction from their giving as our current supporters do. Everyone can become a philanthropist and be part of the future. You can join the foundation as a member, donate to the Cumbria Fund, or how about starting your own fund? This is about giving back and looking forward. Visit cumbriafoundation.org to find out more.